Valenico Vitali takes on Matt the Law Lindland. Our referee, Larry Lendless. He has already had an eventful night. Vitali against Lindland for a second time here at the Mohegan Sun. Vitali will tell you, and he has often, Joe, that he forced Linlin to blow that throw. Yeah, he said he forced Linlin to take a high-risk maneuver, and then he countered it. And that's why Linlin knocked himself out. That he adjusted his weight while Linlin was taking him down, and that forced Linlin to land on his head. Linlin, ever-improving striking skills inside the couture camp. Good left hand right there, Byron. In the southpaw. Vitali has pretty good hands, though. Kickboxing experience himself. He leaves, trying to lean in with that left. He leaves himself wide open when he's doing this. I mean, it's working right there. That's uh -oh. a slip. And Lindlin went to jump in on him. Yep. He'll take the takedown. And a good slam indeed. Yeah, look, Matt Lindlin knows how to take advantage of people's mistakes. He will capitalize if you screw up. And he did. And the one thing, and we've talked about it before with Lindland, he's had so much championship experience, nothing unnerves Matt Lindland. Yeah, absolutely. He says his biggest weapon in the fight is that he knows how to win. He knows how to compete, and he knows how to win competitions. Close guard of Falonico Vitali with the Brazilian jiu-jitsu background, comfortable on his back. Can Lindland rain down some ground in power? Falonico looks like he's trying to wrap up Matt Lindland's right arm. The wrestler on the top, the jiu-jitsu artist on his back. Who will gain the next set of momentum? Just underway, 90 seconds into round one. Fight is scheduled for three five-minute rounds. Still ahead, welterweight championship. Matt Hughes and Frank Trigg. valenico has got Matt's right arm wrapped up. If you let it go now, he's, he's effectively keeping Matt from striking. Matt's trying to pass right now. Matt went for a sprint when Felonico slipped. So a freakish slip by Vitali gives Lindlin early control. Matt's got him in a guillotine here. It looks like it looks like he's got him in some sort of a neck crank. Can he extend the body enough to get the leverage that he needs to close off the breathing pattern? Well, he can if he's in Nico's half guard. And now Nico's using Matt, Matt trying to do that to try to sweep him. He's going to roll up to his knees now. Nico's going back to full guard. Nico trains in grappling unlimited in Hawaii with Egan Inoue, and, uh, you know, he, he's got excellent jiu-jitsu skills. I remember very early on when I was learning jiu-jitsu, Big John McCarthy, and many people talked about, and Hoist Gracie was the best at it, how relaxed the jiu-jitsu artist stays when he is in a situation of distress, and that's what we saw with Vitali. Well, the key you, is not to panic. Yeah, without a doubt. Look, at, he's going for a sweep here. You know, we've seen that over and over in fights. Uh, guys who are in the same situation, one guy panics, he gets through it, and he winds up with the win, and uh, a lesser man uh, freaks out. A guy panics like uh, you know, and can't get over the situation, or you see a guy like Evan Tanner, who was just rocked, yeah. and he composed himself, kept it together, and he pulled through. Don't forget, log on, UFC.tv. All the updated news on the world's greatest, the ultimate fighting championship. And thank you to our very loyal viewers in helping us with the Viewer's Choice Awards tonight. UFC.tv. Falun Eagle's doing a good job of uh, stifling Matt Lindland. He's got a nice guard here. It looks like he's going for a sweep here, trying to grab a hold of a leg. But he might get past here. Matt's throwing some punches. Linlin not able to put too much damage, as you mentioned, Joe. Falonico keeps looking for some sort of a submission. He's looking yeah. to wrap a hold of an arm. and But most importantly, he's stifling Matt Linlin's offense here. And that is the biggest concern of those who support Matt Lindland is they've always said submissions may be Superman's kryptonite. Yeah, he's been submitted before. Wrestlers have a lot of bad mistakes that they, uh, whoa, nice elbow by Matt Lindland right there. 
Wrestlers and have a lot of mistakes that in uh, in their sport uh, are good things, are good habits. You know, posting your arms, uh, bridging yourself up. When you, you leave yourself open in those positions if you fight against a submission guy. So they have to actively remember to not do things that they've been programmed to do their entire competitive career. That's hard to do. Nice kicks. Vitali, five of his last seven wins by submission. Linlin trying to leave an impression in the judges' minds and on their scorecards here at the end of round number one. Matt Linlin had an interesting strategy right there. He would, uh, when he was in front of Vitali, he'd be on one knee so Vitali couldn't kick him with his legs. Then he would stand up real quick and kick his leg and then get in between him himself. Reaction to Tank in Cabbage. Let's check in with Eddie Bravo. I'm backstage here with Tank Abbott. Tank, obviously you thought you could still continue the fight with your cut. What was going on through your mind? Now the way I look at it, man, you know, it's just a cut. You know, you don't, you don't leave the octagon unless you're on your back. And uh, I was fine. I just get my second win. I was ready to turn it up another notch and start dropping some more bombs on them. And they stopped it. And I'm sure, I'll tell you what, I'm sure Cabbage doesn't want like the way it stopped anyways either. But you want to know what? We can do it again. And bottom line is, no. Uh, we can do it again. No one's hurt. No big deal. You just got to do what you got to do. Obviously, I wouldn't want to see it uh, end this way, but life goes on. Well, there you have it. Tank's up for a rematch, and so am I. I'm sure the fans are as well. Back to you, Mike and Joe. That's a nasty cut. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. And if it was blurring his vision, then he couldn't intelligently defend himself. Well, you know what? John McCarthy and the doctor made a judgment call, yep. and uh, we got to air on the side of the fighter's safety. Of the ultimate importance. That's the one thing that has not changed. And again, he's fine to fight in a rematch. Absolutely. And I'm sure everyone would love to see it. I know I would. Second round, Matt Lindland in the longer black trunks. Falanico Vitali sporting the full contact fighter gear. It was a slip that allowed nice Lindland to take down before he connects with that throw of the left hand. Falanico's looking a little tired. I remember it was the slip. And Lindland closed in quickly in round number one. And fatigue could become a factor because Lindland was working and working diligently to pass the guard of Vitali, so he had to exercise tons of energy and utilize it to just avoid Lindland gaining an aggressive spot. Yeah, Vitali was constantly reacting to Lindland. He's got a hold of the neck. Well, he's got a hold of his legs, rather. He's going to go for a takedown here. Let's see how good. Vitaly's takedown defense actually is. Nice elbow inside by Lindlin. Very nice. Vitaly's thinking about the takedown. Lindlin's mixing it up. Nice control by Matt Lindlin. Mixing it up between clinching and striking. Lindlin isn't afraid to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe. And, and then again, Vitali isn't the biggest threat in the middleweight division. As a striker. As a striker, correct. Well, Lindlin has improved his striking. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, those guys uh, over at Team Quest, they improve everything. I mean, Randy Couture literally looks like a professional kickboxer now when he fights. I mean, these are guys with pure wrestling backgrounds who develop excellent striking skills. Oh, Lindlin. nice leg kick by Vitali. And Lindlin takes advantage of it with a bum rush. And Joe, obviously, Lindland had to improve his striking when he was uh, upon his resume meeting Phil Baroni not once but twice. Yeah, he, he hung in there with Baroni on his feet. Yep. That's uh, something Baroni didn't expect. But, but Lindland's very intelligent. I mean, when a guy's looking to trade with him, he gets the guy into a position where he, the guy thinks that he's going to throw a punch with him, and then he'll take him down. Uh, he, but, he is the master of control. Yeah, he's, he's got excellent control. I mean, he's, that's, uh, that's the specialty of Greco-Roman wrestling. Nice foot stomps by him. You know, Vitaly is not used to the big show. He had one, one fight in the UFC, and uh, it ended quickly and weirdly. You know, uh, and Matt Lindland's got a lot of experience in here. He's won, he's lost. He's, he's beaten great guys like Pat Militich. He's beaten Phil Baroni, and he's lost to Merlo Bustamante. He's got a lot of octagon experience. And I still contend he looked his best at UFC 42 in Atlantic City when he defeated Baroni by the unanimous decision prior to a, a quick return with the freakish knockout that he suffered 
at the hands of this man Vitali. So he had peaked himself to a different level. They're going to restart it for inactivity. Larry Landless pulls him apart, sets him back up. 135 remains in round two. UFC 46, January 31st, 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 Pacific, Super Saturday night. Super Bowl weekend, celebrate it with us. Supernatural Randy Couture will defend his UFC light heavyweight crown against Vitor the Phenom Belfort. Tickets are on sale now. Matt looks the most composed and relaxed here. Falonico looks like every time he throws a kick or a punch, he's got to relax afterwards. It could be the pressure of the event that's making him gas. It doesn't look like he's out of shape at all. Or it could just be that Matt Lindland is working him so hard that he's running out of steam. Super Bowl weekend, Super Saturday, UFC 46, live on pay-per-view. That's going to be a wild wow. event right That there. is the place you want to be. How about the rematch between Vitor Belfort and Randy Couture? Man, that's going to be crazy. Many consider it still, to this day, the greatest upset in UFC history when Couture beat Belfort years ago. Little did we know that a legend was born that night, and his name was Randy Couture. You can see Lindland holding him and then pushing off, just get enough room to throw some strikes. Matt's uh, in complete control of these clinches. He's doing all the damage. Nice elbows and tight. And Falonico's just kind of like trying to slap back to react to it, but he's getting worked. He's getting worked and he's getting worn out. And Matt looks fine. Second round, and again, good control for Matt Lindlin. We have heard from Tank Cabot. Now how about a reaction from Cabbage? Eddie Bravo has Cabbage. I'm backstage here with Cabbage. Cabbage, your little dance at the end there caused a fiasco. That's my signature. After I win, I always do the Cabbage match. <laughs> um, Tank claimed that he could have kept fighting with that cut. Did you feel that he was about to get knocked out? I kept on dropping when everybody seen me drop him like three times and the knees were just taking it to him. If he wants to dance again, we can dance again. But right now I got Kimo in my sights because Kimo was talking a lot of smack. So I got to shut him up and the other, leather, other legend too. Well, there you go. A rematch in the future with Tank. Back to you, Mike and Joe. Very Potential rematch, guy. yeah. How about him and Kimo? That's yeah. an interesting fight right there too. Couple big lines. Matt Lindland's pumped. He's pacing in his corner like a cheetah. Lindland. 33 years old, Olympic silver medalist. And Falonico Vitali has that look of frustration. He hasn't been able, Joe, at all to get into his game plan. Well, you, you got to wonder if maybe he underestimated Matt Lillen after winning that first fight so easily and freakishly. Oh, oh, Matt oh down goes kick. Matt. But I got to ask you, how do you underestimate Matt Lindland? There's you know, more than a minute and a half worth of tape on Matt Lindland. You know what? Guys have egos. And he, oh, look at this. Look at this. Matt Lindland's going for a triangle. Matt Lindland is going for, oh, he's going to get his guard passed. I would have been very impressed if Matt Lindland landed that triangle there. I mean, I know those guys work on submissions, but, you know, they're just so comfortable wrestling that they don't usually go for them. They would rather just keep a good position and pound the guy. Well, that would have been as crazy as how the last one ended, seeing a man who is most vulnerable to submissions win by submission against a man with great jiu-jitsu tutelage. Oh, Fallon Eagles trying to pass here. Now we know one thing, wrestlers don't like to be on their backs. Matt Lindlin is no exception, half guard. He certainly doesn't like this position right here. And Fallon Eagles gonna try to pass here. Third and final round. This is a much better position for Fallon Eco. And uh, it came from a mistake. Matt Lindlin threw a kick, had a little slip. Now here they are. And again, talking about the uh, overestimating, you got to realize fighters have egos. And yeah, uh, no, your ego true. will have you convinced that you are the man. You know, and if you beat a guy, you're like, yeah, I'm going to beat him again. You, you got to prepare for war. And hopefully you won't have a war. Hopefully you will win easy. But if you don't win easy and you know you didn't prepare for war, that's a bad feeling. And I'm not saying that Nico did do that, that he did underestimate him, but it's certainly not, this fight's certainly not going the way he wants it to. Now, remember, it was a slip in round one. A slip by Vitali that allowed Linlin to gain control. Good scramble. Linlin's doing a good job of not letting Vitali tee off on him. He's holding on to him, and when Vitali gets to rise up, he's kicking him off and moving and bucking and, and making sure that Nico doesn't have a good chance to land a clean shot on him. 
I mean, that Team Quest, I mean, what, what an excellent camp they have. The, those guys are just so well-versed in all aspects of mixed, mixed martial arts fighting. They're all constantly improving. You know, Dan Henderson just knocked out Bustamante in pride in devastating fashion. You got Randy Couture, 40 years old, you know, beating the hell out of guys 10 and 20 years his senior, his junior, rather. And you got Matt Lindland constantly improving. It's a, it's a fantastic camp. And while Lindland is on his back here in true competition, how many hundreds of times have his training partners started them with Lindland on his back to try to see what his defense would be? Oh, absolutely. I'm sure they train like that all the time. I mean, uh, Randy did a lot of that when he fought Tito. He, uh, and he, he said that was the most uncomfortable thing for him, just working, the most unusual thing, working from his back. And I'm sure Lindland works from his back constantly, too. Like I said, they work on all aspects of fighting. All good camps do. Landless in close range. Oh, that another kick one. connects. Nico shook the last one off. He's Nico's trying to move slide in. Through the guard. Yep. He's got one leg through. Matt did a nice job, half guard, trying to close it. Nico's really got to make up some points that he lost in the first two rounds. Yeah, and Matt's got a well. Matt's got double underhooks here. This is a good spot for him. Double underhooks and half guard. I was actually talking about him about this with him at lunch. He said he loves half guard. He likes to sweep guys from this position. And it looks like he's doing that very thing right now. He's getting his back. He's a Greco-Roman wrestler. You let that guy get double underhooks and clinch his hands together, he's going to control you. I mean, he's so superior in those positions. And now Nico's going to feel his wrath. Dropping some elbows down. Now, not that Nico was able to do too much damage a moment ago, but we know one thing, it's back to Matt Lindland's world. Matt would like to get either inside control. Oh, he's controlling that arm. That's nice. That's a nice position right oh, there. Good elbow. He's got one arm trapped in between his legs. If he can keep that there, he can drop some good elbows and really control them. Well, Lindland will keep busy, even in the half guard. He's going to slip it through. Yes, he's got he the mount. He's got, he's got the, the mount, mount now. He's got the full mount. And he's going to hold on to that mount, too. His, his control in the mount is excellent. We saw him just dominate Pat. And it he's is tapping. all over. Wow, it is all tapped. over. Belenico Vitali has tapped. Good job by Matt Lindland. Way to come back from a freakish loss. Improve your dominance. Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, the fighter Nico Vitale tapped out at four minutes, 23 seconds of the third round. Making the winner, Matt, the law, Lindley.